Hi, everyone, and welcome to Desktop 101. I'm Rob Liao from Google, and I'm an owner of the Views UI Toolkit. Now, one question I'm often asked is, why do we even care about desktop? You know, mobile is all the rage. Everyone's walking around with their phones. Uh, why would we care about computers on desks in Chromium? And so to answer that question, I think it might be useful to see uh, how folks are actually using Chromium on the developer side. And so if we look at Chromium-based browsers, obviously we have uh, Chrome. Uh, but if we look at Wikipedia, there's 22 other ones. You know, there are a lot of people who are interested in using Chromium as, their, as the engine for their web browser. And so if we take a look at the operating systems that they use, we'll see that uh, a lot of them use the usual suspects, we have Windows, Mac OS, Android, Linux, and iOS. And these ones that are in blue, uh, these are the ones that we typically use uh, on computers that we use on our desks, on our laps. And these are the ones that we're actually interested in talking about in this specific, specific talk. And so uh, in the 20 minutes I have uh, given this with 10 minutes at the end for questions, uh, we're gonna take a very quick tour on kind of the joys and sorrows of developing on Chromium, on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And then we're gonna take a very, very high level view on UI. Uh, some backstory on how things were and where things are going. Uh, once again, I'll be taking questions uh, at the end. You can post them on Slido in room C. And so uh, we'll get to those towards the end. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So in the land of Windows, uh, we get to work on a very popular platform. And as you saw that 20 of the uh, Chromium browsers, Chromium-based browsers target Windows, uh, according to Wikipedia. And along with this, you know, we're working with Windows, you have to work with Win32 APIs. It's pretty much a fact of life. And there are a lot of free, there's a lot of freedom in using these Win32 APIs. And folks who have been developing a long time know that, you know, when you're setting up your application for the first time, you have to create your own message pump, you know, you have to call get message, translate message, dispatch message. Um, and this isn't something that you really see as much on other platforms. A lot of that's already done for you. Uh, there are a lot of tricky areas. So one area that I personally worked on uh, was per monitor DPI and getting that worked, uh, getting that correctly working on Chromium. This is not something that we typically have to worry about on Windows because most of the time monitors had a consistent DPI uh, across most of the monitors. And so as folks had higher resolution monitors on say their laptops and then they needed to present on a lower resolution projector, uh, Getting this handled correctly uh, became really important. And translating between Windows physical pixels and our logical pixels to make the UI continue to look right, make sure that everything scales correctly, uh, super tricky. Uh, and in addition, because Windows has been out for a really long time, uh, there are a lot of legacy areas that we have to deal with. So integrating with the Windows shell, uh, how to do that properly, making sure we use the right APIs, uh, and dealing with the rules that have changed from Windows 7 through Windows 10 is something that we also have to look out for. And with the, uh, you know, the uh, advanced version of this platform, you know, there are a lot of diverse APIs that we have to work with. Not only do we have to work with Win32, but with some of the new features in Windows 10, we have to incorporate things like WinRT into uh, the system. Uh, and some of the things that came out a little earlier than WinRT, they'll be under Cobb. And so we have to be ready to support all of these APIs from the latest version of Windows 10 through Windows 7. And so that means we have to be ready when an API isn't available and then gracefully fall back uh, if it's not there. Another interesting thing that we often run into with Windows is uh, applications tend to love injecting into our third party or into our uh, address space. Uh, it's third party software challenges and uh, it causes kind of all kinds of hangs and crashes. Uh, something I skipped there, sorry, is um, there is no included modern native UI platform. Uh, Windows historically has provided its common controls and um, that's starting to change with uh, WinUI 3.0, but everyone else has really rolled their own uh, native UI platform when trying to get an application to display uh, something in C++. Uh, finally, uh, the best debugging and performance analysis, in my opinion, is on Windows. Now I may be slightly biased because I do most of my development on Windows, uh, but you know, personally I use WinDebug, uh, a lot of other folks on our team use Visual Studio, and we find that the visibility that we have into 
uh, what's going on in process, how to analyze something post-mortem, uh, we get the best support uh, from these tools. Uh, now on to Mac OS. So on Mac OS, uh, users really care about design. They have very strong expectation on how things should behave. Things like how focus uh, behaves with the keyboard to how visuals look. And this presents interesting challenges uh, when dealing with things like changes from each version of Mac OS to the next. Uh, one of the ones that we ran into quite a bit was uh, the font changes. So as folks may know, um, you know, the system font changed from uh, Lucida Grand to Helvetica New and now it's San Francisco. And so each one of these meant that we had to re-audit all of our UI to make sure that they continue to look fine. Um, and it's hard to talk about Mac OS without also talk, talking about Objective-C, which is another language that folks have to deal with when targeting this platform. And uh, one person on my team uh, had never worked with this before, you know, was talking to me about it. And, and they were just mentioning, oh, I'm putting these brackets here and there. And, and it seems to work, but I, I really have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, but don't worry, we have a dedicated Mac team to make sure that these folks get to the right place and, uh, you know, make sure that the code works correctly. Uh, another interesting part about Mac OS is it's a little different from Windows. It's very heavily opinion in how one uses the system. And so things like set up the main thread, for example, like on Windows, you have complete freedom to do anything you want in your message pump, right? You can in inject different uh, method calls, function calls in between. On Mac, folks who typically have a more traditional application We'll go through like NS application, and then you'll have the NS app run, you know, and then everything's taken care of for you. If you want to plug into it, there's APIs that you can use, uh, like run loop sources to get more uh, control over the uh, the run loop. Um, other interesting things, uh, setting up UI like full screen, something that really isn't a thing on other platforms. So. Uh, when you press the kind of the green traffic light button, the app moves into a kind of a special quasi multi desktop mode, but it's actually just dedicated to the app. Um, we don't really have that on, on Windows. And so we have to do a lot of special work to make that happen correctly. Um, and speaking of the green traffic light, there's no real notion of window maximization like on Windows. So on Windows, when you maximize a window, um, you can actually click it again and then it'll actually restore the window to a smaller shape or whatever it was before. Uh, on Mac, we really don't have that. A lot of that used to be determined based off the content area, and then we'll try to measure what the content area looks like and sh shape the window so you can see most of that. Um, right now, we just kind of expand the window to uh, as large as possible because of the way we're doing uh, cross-platform handling. And then uh, finally, there's some interesting oddities like the uh, global pasteboard. And so the global pasteboard is a, basically an expectation that many apps have where if you copy paste or if you put something in the a find box uh, on one application, it shows up in the find box in another application. This makes things particularly interesting for Chrome because, or Chromium because we have to support things like incognito. And so making sure that uh, we don't leak data from incognito to the global pasteboard that other apps can discover is something that folks have to watch out for when developing on Mac OS. And then finally on to Linux. Um, Linux, a lot of folks have very diverse distributions, a lot of different versions of libraries. And so there are fewer ABI guarantees. Um, the, the binary contract is different from each platform to each platform. And so that makes it very difficult to basically distribute a universally workable binary. Oftentimes you'll have to build Chromium from scratch to get things to work correctly. Um, there are many different window managers. And so we'll have many different window frames to worry about, many different UI bugs. Uh, but one nice thing that Linux does give to us is our tool chain uh, with Kling and LEDB work most reliably there. They're fast. We can do a lot of introspection. All the symbols are there. Works pretty well. And so uh, with those as the main platforms that we support, our development experience kind of looks like this slide here. Um, we have a common C++ compiler. We use a variety of editors, some of them cross-platform, like Sublime Text Visual Studio Code, and then some of them that are targeted towards their individual platform. And then the debugger tool chains are also uh, targeted for each of, the, each of their platforms. Uh, and then even our performance analysis. Uh, we have Chrome tracing, if we have uh, visibility in our own code that we've already instrumented. And then uh, we have you know, the Windows Performance Toolkit with Xpert from Windows uh, that allows us to get a little bit more insight into how things are done. Now, personally, I find that the, the tools on Windows for me work the best. And so, you know, we'll, we'll run into issues on Mac OS or Linux in terms of performance. And we find that, you know, if it's actually a cross-platform thing, 
we could do the analysis on Windows and then uh, get the same result uh, in a much easier way. With developing for all these platforms, you know, how do we develop an experience that targets all of this? Uh, and so, you know, that's where we're going to go into next. This is where our, you know, very high level UI tour starts. So we take a look at the foundations, you know, we have content and uh, you can check out anatomy of a browser, a different talk uh, to get a little bit more details about this, about the content and the UI split in Chromium. Uh, but users, you know, they're happy with the web page, but they usually want a little bit more. They want things like, you know, back and forward buttons. They want to have a, an address box. And so you probably want to provide some sort of UI uh, just to keep your users happy and, you know, allow them to very easily uh, inter like inter use your UI. And so one approach we could have taken is to uh, write the browser UI three times. Doesn't sound like fun. Sounds like a lot of work, actually, and uh, a lot of opportunities to have very small differences here and there. And so uh, what actually happened in back in history is back in uh, December 2008, Chrome was released uh, on the stable channel only on Windows. And so Mac OS and Linux did miss out at the beginning. And so, you know, there was a there was a promise like, look, we will have this out within a year or so. And so, you know, one of the things that came out of this was trying to get this to work on Linux, for example. Now, Linux and Linux, Linux and Windows share a lot of uh, UI paradigms, a lot of common UI paradigms. And so uh, a lot of the things that already were working on Windows kind of migrated OK to Linux. Uh, there are a lot of, because of the parallels. And so this is kind of the, the beginnings of a cross-platform toolkit. Now with Mac OS, you kind of have to think differently. And so uh, Mac, in this case, was actually built straight off of Cocoa. And so, you know, folks that are familiar, we use direct native NSViews. Uh, and it's window directly. And so uh, each feature that we want to implement in Chrome had to be implemented twice, once for views and once for Mac, Mac OS. It's not great, it's not terrible. Uh, and so, you know, what's going on with this whole views thing? You know, what's going on in this cross platform toolkit? And so uh, it's a tree based UI system. And so, for those of you who've already used uh, UI toolkit before, you'll see that this is a very familiar, you'll have nodes that are within nodes. A uh, very traditional way of doing this. HTML does this, uh, Windows Presentation Foundation that, uh, does this, uh, among others. Because it targeted Windows first, there's a strong Windows influence. And so there's some Windows idioms that we have in views, like, for example, maximization, that don't really exist in Mac that don't fit really well. And these are actually open questions on how best to uh, handle that. Uh, there's a control library. And so when you're trying to put together an application, free to use those. And then there's a set of layouts to help you arrange your UI in a way that works for you. And hopefully it doesn't mean you have to write a whole bunch of custom code to lay out your um, controls. And, and a lot more, there's a lot of very support that Windows, or Views, sorry, Views does for us uh, on multiple platforms. And so now we're gonna get into a little bit of some of the more low level things that you might encounter while using Views. Uh, you're gonna see things like widgets, which is basically a platform abstract way of representing a system window. And so you don't have to worry about, uh, is this an NS window? Is this a H win on Windows? Uh, is it an X level window? This is all abstracted away from you at the views level. Uh, so how does views deal with this? Well, views has a native widget object that goes with the widget. And this is actually the, the object that does a lot of the talking with the underlying platform. And we have Aura window for Aura. Aura is kind of our, App, uh, cross platform uh, window abstraction for Windows and Linux. And then we have NS Windows still for Mac. And then we have the view object. You know, it's a basic UI building block. And so it might be a label and a button, could be a menu, could be a whole bunch of text boxes. And you do enough of these things, you put enough of these together, uh, you suddenly get a browser. And so, um, you know, as we put things together, they turn into a tree like this. You know, and we have uh, in Chromium specifically, we start with the top level. Here's our tree right here. And so the kind of the top level node is this browser view and it can encapsulates most of everything uh, that we see. So browser view basically encapsulates this entire window here. Oops. And then uh, when we have uh, the top container view, that's kind of this upper area here. And then we have the content area. That's this section down here, the contents web view. And then each of these top container view, or this top container view has a toolbar view, tab strip view, so it's kind of divides into, and so on and so forth. So as each piece, as you get deeper into tree, you get into smaller and smaller pieces of uh, the views framework. And so 
you will note that there's also, there has to be an equivalent Mac OS Cocoa Tree as well, because we have to do this twice. And so this means as we add more features into the UI tree, you know, you have to write it twice, which is so manageable. But if you want to do things like refresh your UI globally, you want to change how things look everywhere, you know, that's where things get particularly fun because that means you have to almost rewrite the entire thing twice. That's definitely not fun. And so starting with dialogues, folks might have noticed during M64, M66, things started to change, you know, and, and things started to look more kind of Chromium-like, if you will, and less like Mac OS, like on Mac. And so there was an effort to get views onto Mac, starting with this whole dialogue uh, revamp. And then uh, the next thing that really motivated getting uh, views onto Mac was the uh, Chromium M69 release, also known as the Chrome's 10th birthday. And that meant that you know, we had to rewrite the top Chrome UI, the top area where the tab strip and the toolbar are. We didn't want to do that twice. And so uh, that provided strong motivation towards getting views into that area. And then landing a visual refresh device would have been a very bad time for all involved. And so that's when we started doing two, both of those efforts in parallel in the background. So we had a team working on uh, doing the actual refresh, and then we had another team working on actually getting Matthews out the door. And so at the end with the M69 release, you know, we have a cross-platform toolkit that works on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And so everything's fine now, right? Everything runs. We can run right once and run everywhere, right? Well, there's some exceptions, right? So on Mac, we still actually use the uh, the native menu on the browser content context menu. And that was the, those are the main exceptions that we have. And because we had user feedback that they didn't really like the way the views menus work. So still use some Mac uh, built-in UI uh, controls there. And then if we take a look above, well, we are still using NS views at the content layer. So when content hands us a surface, if you will, or a control to embed into views, well, on Mac, it's an NS view. And on Windows Linux, it's an Aura window. So we still have to do that twice. And then our window abstraction. Uh, Aura, our window abstraction only works on Windows Linux. We don't use it at all on Mac. And then getting down to even input routing. Input routing is handled completely separately on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And so we kind of have to keep that separate. Uh, one thing that's a thorn in our side, uh, very uh, even today, is the way that focus rules are handled. So Mac handles uh, child dialogues differently than on Windows and Linux. So uh, we have active and focus that are used together on Windows and Linux. On Mac, we have the notion of a main window and a key window, which acts very differently. And so we have to kind of resolve those um, as we create visuals if a window is active or inactive. And sometimes we actually have to fake active, uh, even though a window may actually be inactive to make things look right. And so, you know, not only did things, you know, have some split there, there are very different platform conventions that each one of these have. So on Windows, the primary button is more on the left-hand side. On Mac, it's expected to be on the right. And so uh, we actually have code in platform style to deal with that. You know, K is OK button leading is set differently on Windows uh, than it is on pretty much all the other platforms. And uh, on the note of active and inactive windows, on Mac, there's a strong expectation that when a window is inactive, you know, we do things like gray out the controls, make them look disabled, uh, which is not true on Windows. And so uh, we have to keep track of this in a separate So these are things that really we can't unify but there are things that we uh, have captured in platform style to allow us to kind of tailor Chromium um, to these specific platforms. And so um, that's a big, quick overall tour of the things that we run into and some takeaways that you have. Uh, you know, desktop platforms remain incredibly important to Chromium. We built a whole cross-platform UI toolkit. We did a lot of work to make sure that uh, Chromium works great on each of these platforms, uh, but there's still a lot of work to do. You know, there's still a lot of work to do some unification and um, you know, kind of restructuring to make things you know, right once, run everywhere, if you will. And then finally, if you have any questions uh, that come up in the land of UI as you're uh, working on Chromium, feel free to email ui at chromium.org. Uh, or if you have a question specifically about the Views toolkit as you're using it, feel free to email uh, views at chromium.org. And so uh, thanks for your time. And with that, I'll take questions if there are any. See, let me switch to that. 
Uh, we have a question on Linux. Do we have policy on what Moodle managers we prioritize support for or a set that we regularly run tests on? Ah, oh, that's a very good question. So I know that we are heavily biased towards uh, Debian and Ubuntu-based distributions. And so um, those are the ones that we target when running tests on uh, the bots. Um, and the hope is if it runs fine there, it runs fine on other uh, distributions. Now that's not always true. We do find bugs that you know only repro and say like Red Hat or even Gen 2 and things like that. So, but yeah, that's kind of how we prioritize support right now. Good question. All right, uh, no other questions. I guess we can go ahead and wrap it up here. So thanks everyone. And uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your Caribbean University. <laughs>